So we did the question, what is humanity? And I'm Allison. Introduce yourselves. Okay, I'm Summer. I'm Colt. I'm David. I'm Nathan. So humanity, the actual definition <coughs> is considered the human race or human beings collectively. Um, and the definition of inhumanity is extremely cruel and brutal behavior. So if you want to add that back into the humanity definition, you could consider humanity to be not extremely cruel behavior towards the human race and whatnot. So yeah, go to the next slide. Um, so the concept of humanity slash inhumanity um, is present in modern day pop culture in many ways. Um, but our main thesis, um, it's humanity is very subjective to the individual um, based on if you're doing it at a mass scale of what you're trying to preach what humanity considered or what you consider humanity to be. If you're doing it at a mass scale, it can be considered who your target audience is. And that might be kind of confusing, but I'll explain that. And so, and then it could be the person's background or upbringing. So like how you were raised, where you grew up, could consider what you can, um, could help determine what you consider humanity. And then it can also correlate back to the good slash evil nature of the individual. So if you want to go. Um, so the thing that I did for the pop culture example was the Hunger Games. Um, so, and everybody's familiar with the Hunger Games, correct? Everybody knows what it is. So, um, when it comes to the target audience, um, Katniss, it's centered around the idea that the capital's the evil guy. And uh, Katniss appeals to the minorities and people who may feel they might not have a voice, per se. Um, whereas, and she lived a very unprivileged life as compared to those in the capital, and honestly, a majority of the districts did. Um, President Snow, he viewed the games as patriotic, so essentially he's saying that the slaughter of people is patriotic for the country of Pan Am, and he targets the privileged members of Pan Am, um, and those who have a fighting chance or advantage within the games. And um, when it comes to the fact and correlates back to the good slash evil nature of people, um, Katniss in the first movie, she when she's about to be shipped off to the games, She's talking to Gail, and he is like, you know how to hunt, you can do this, and she's like, killing a human is not, killing, is not like killing an animal. So in President Snow, he, when it comes to, when you go through Catching Fire and Mockingjay, and Katniss starts to rebel against the Capitol, he begins to use tactics to kill off, essentially, his own people that he runs the country for. And Katniss, so she starts this rebellion to stop the mass killing of people within the games because people of the districts and her district 12 specifically views the games as inhumane and just essentially cruel and unusual punishment for people of Pan Am. And some quotes by President Snow, which are from the Catching Fire movie, um, he's talking to Katniss in the second quote. He's like, you fought very hard in the games, missed everything, but they were games. Would you like to be in a real war, imagine thousands of your people dead, your loved ones gone. And then he says, the other victors, because of her, they all pose a threat. Because of her, they all think they are invincible. So this is pretty much saying that to get rid of the biggest threat, which he says is hope, which is, i.e., the picture of Katniss, gives people hope. And so the only way to get rid of that is to kill everyone off. So that could be considered an inhumane act by the capital. And so, um, also in the third movie, um, when Katniss is, when they're bombing the big shelter, I think outside of District 2, she has the heart, the same people that are trying to essentially kill her off, she wants to give them a fighting chance to escape. And so they end up sending them all through the tunnel. And when she's at gunpoint, she starts to preach about how Snow is the evil one and that they all should rebel against the capital. So she essentially gives the people that are same, they're the same people that are trying to kill her a fighting chance to live. So she has more of a humane aspect of it, whereas President Snow is very inhumane with his actions. So. Okay. Uh, I decided to focus a little more on what makes humanity unique. Uh, there were a lot of choices to use uh, as for my source. There were a lot of books and movies that address this issue. Uh, I chose the no novel called Choke. Uh, it's written by Chuck Palahniuk, who you probably, it's, it's the guy who wrote Fight Club. So if you've seen that movie, it's kind of similar in that style. Uh, and I decided to focus on three main points that are kind of brought up, re, that are very reoccurring throughout the novel, which are the idea of mortality, the idea of escape, and the idea of kind of our past and our futures. And 
also, uh, I, I won't go into the plot very deeply, I'll kind of mention a few things as they go along, but the, the basic points needed to know are that the main character and his best friend are like recovering sex addicts, and so the, a lot of their past is kind of brought up in that way. Uh, and the main character is also struggling financially to like keep his mother in a uh, <coughs> assisted living facility because she's uh, dying in that way. So. so the first point is mortality. Uh, when I was discussing this topic, uh, one of the things that kept coming back to my head was the idea of uh, like comparing humans to deer. When I think of like a deer in the forest, uh, one of the things that we can do uh, is that we can like take a step back and look at ourselves. We're self-aware. We can like look at ourselves in the mirror, uh, whereas like a deer can't really do that. Uh, so, the the book kind of takes a negative a negative aspect aspect of this, and the mother uh, has this idea that sponges never have a bad day, and kind of uh, comes up with the idea that thinking is like the source of our suffering. And so, uh, if we want to avoid that, we just have to avoid thinking. But I, that is one of the things that makes humanity unique: is the ability to kind of think and look at ourselves. Uh, also. <laughs> awesome. uh, also, our mortality is fleeting. We don't live forever, uh, and we are aware of that. And one of the quotes was, "Anything you can acquire is only another thing you lose." So just kind of that idea of like what we have is not permanent, and we're aware of that. So building into that, uh, since we are uh, able to look at that, it's kind of a sad thing, and we want to escape that. Uh, the reason I put the picture of Netflix is. Uh, I don't know about you, but I have had many assignments where I decided it was much more important to watch Netflix than to do the assignment that was uh, due the next day. Done that many times. Uh, in the book, they don't really uh, watch Netflix, but they do have many ways of escaping uh, uh, escaping their problems. And so I kind of put the four words there, and I think they all essentially mean the same thing, which is addiction, avoidance, denial, and distraction. Essentially just all the same idea of finding some way to escape the reality of problems and that's something we're good at as humans. And then the quote there was, this was talking about soap operas, I thought it was kind of a cool quote. It said, it was real people pretending to be fake people with made up problems being watched by real people to forget their real problems. So I just thought that was kind of a cool quote and I think it's pretty accurate. So, uh, so lastly is the idea of past and future. So as I mentioned before, the ability to like to take a step back and look at ourselves. We can also do that with time. We can look uh, at our past and we can look at our futures. And I think that's summed up really well in the picture. So it's like a Venn diagram, uh, and the person is standing in both. So we're not kind of like limited to the present. We can look at our past and our futures. Uh, and then the quote I had at the end was, "Someday I'd like to live a life based on not doing, based on doing good stuff instead of just not doing bad stuff." I thought that was also a nice quote. Uh, so yeah, just in conclusion, the idea that we can, what makes us unique as humans is our ability to kind of think and take a step back from our present and from ourselves and look at those around us and the past and the future. Part of humanity. I took on the good versus evil part of humanity. Um, I chose the show The Flash. So first off, there's two sides to everything. We argue, there's two sides. Some people don't even see the other side. So stuff works out, but we clash between one another if we like it or not. It's almost like a norm. It's normal that we want to see fights. We want to see people have conflicts and stuff like that. So my example was The Flash. A little bit of background was Barry Allen, as a kid, he was 11 years old. He witnessed his mother's death. <clears throat> he saw what, what really happened, but to the police, he could never say, a flash of light killed his mother. So his father got accused and his father went to the prison. <coughs> he grows up into a foster home. He becomes an intelligent CSI investigator to find his mother's killer. And uh, he had really good connections with what they call Star Labs in the, in the TV show. And what they do there is look for advanced medicine, technology and improvements of the world. And one of the things that they did was a particle accelerator that Harrison Wells made and it exploded and it affected half the city. Barry Allen was affected by this and he got struck by lightning. He was in a coma for nine months and he woke up and figured out that he had superpowers.
So when he struck, when he was struck by lightning, he be, he be woke up, had powers, and he he chose chose something. He chose to help the human race. In the good versus evil, he could have chose the to be evil and have all the greed in the world, but he chose to be on the human side. Throughout the whole city, other people were affected by this particle accelerated and then became evil. He took on the the role as a hero. He chose that it is humane to help our society and our human race. So he sacrifices his life to save others in return for the city, for the hero the city needs. All right, so I chose for our pop culture reference my pop culture reference is Black Mirror. So just like a little background, it's a British television show. It's kind of fairly new to Netflix. So if you've never seen it, like it's not a big deal. Like not, not many people seen it. It's just kind of hit the USA like this past year. Uh, three part series has 13 episodes. They're each like an hour long. Each has a different storyline and each has a different cast. And it kind of shows how society will potentially be in be 10 years 20 years it might not ever happen but it shows how society might be in the future and how humans deal with the new technological advances that are beginning to happen now so some of the questions that the show raises are how will humans start to behave differently due to these new advances in society and because of these advances will hum are humans born good and they learn the evil due to these advances or do we just have the evil already in us and so it's like the very first episode of Black Mirror is called National Anthem. And it's about a prime, prime minister from the UK. And he has to go to a meeting with like his officials and they end up finding out that he's being blackmailed. And they show him the video and it shows the terrorist with the princess that he had captured, but he only has one demand when it comes to getting the princess back. And the demand is the prime minister has to have intercourse with a pig on live television, like the whole world scene. And so they spend the whole episode basically looking for ways to find the guy, find the princess, get him out of this. And you have to watch the episode. I don't want to spoil the ending for you. But it kind of just goes back to um, like good and evil. Did the person who actually took the princess, did he was he born this way or did something happen in his life that like led him to go take the princess and want to blackmail the prime minister? And then for the um, and then for the second uh, episode, it is called the entire history of you, and it is where everyone in like humanity they are installed with like these chips in our heads, and it gives the um, it gives them the ability to like remember everything that's happened in their lives and then be able to replay it at any time that they want. So that the basis of that show is a man and a woman are having issues in their lives and they end up attending a party. And when he gets there, the woman is flirting like with this other guy, which he like, which the husband later finds out, like these two were dating. So he, it starts to drive him really crazy. And then the husband <coughs> finally asks his wife, like, hey, like what's going on between you two? And he ple replays these memories in his head of the man and the, the, man and the woman at the party. And later on, he asks his wife to replay the images from her head to see like what was actually happening in her life to see if she was actually telling the truth. So this kind of like relates back to, are we able to actually handle these advances in society or will it start to drive us crazy? All right, so we're already over on time, so I'm gonna try to do this as quick as possible so we can get the hell out of here. Uh, so Prison Break, for you guys who don't know, it's a TV show. A guy is wrongly accused of murder. He murders the vice president and soon to become president's uh, brother, and he's sentenced to death, essentially. Um, so. How do we value human life is one of the big issues that this show brings up. Uh, and part of that, there's two big questions. Is the death penalty just? And how do we decide when the death penalty is permissible? Um, so there's kind of like two philosophies to that. Part of that is Michael Schofield. Um, the guy there is Lincoln Burroughs. Michael Schofield's his brother. He breaks him out of prison. That's why it's called prison break, breaking out of prison. Um, so Michael Schofield's philosophy on it, he doesn't think the death penalty is just. Um, and he doesn't, like he thinks that it's completely unfair that just because he killed an important person, he sentenced to death, and there's another guy named Teabag who like raped and murdered like 20 like children, and he's not like put to death. So that's something that Schofield struggled with. And there's, then there's this thing called The Company, which is kind of like the Illuminati, but in the TV show they call it The Company. And essentially like they had this all orchestrated to have this 